It's Adobe Firefly <laughs> for video. Hey everybody, I'm Andrew Hockrottle. I'm Sin Lagos. We got it. And today we are going to be hanging out with you for the next two hours doing some workflows. Right now we're going to be jumping into using Firefly with video, right? Mm -hmm. Sweet. That's I'm actually right. really, really excited. If you are joining us from our Discord community, I know that this is our usual hangout time. Put us that purple heart in chat. Ooh, this is a good heart. Honestly, that's a pretty what good heart the, right there. the little heart? Oh, the little one? Yeah. I like that one too. <laughs> uh, so if you are joining from Discord, leave that purple heart. If you have questions for us at any point, this is live. Hello, Oliver. Hello, Wade. Hello, Luciano. Uh, put your questions in chat and we'll be able to answer those as we go. So let, let's hop over to my screen. I want to intro our friend oh, Sin here. You. Incredible work. Tell us a little bit about you and what you do. Yeah, so again, my name is Sin Lagos. I am focused on uh, mentoring visual creators, um, just like you. I ha come from a place of like self-taught um, graphic design, photography, and film, and I find this to be like a very special journey that I want to share with everyone. So I'm really happy to be in this position now, uh, the mentee for mentors, uh, I mean, for students out there that are trying to develop their skill sets. And yeah, I've, I've been developing some really cool classes on Skillshare lately. It was a whirlwind. I, I produced it, I recorded it, I learned a whole lot throughout it, but you know, trial by, 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 by fire. That's kind of how we, we do it out That's here. That's how you do it. So you yeah. can scroll down and there's information about uh, the website. So you can follow Sin over on Behance, uh, Instagram, all the places over there. Now let's hop over and let's jump into video. Where are we yeah. starting today? So we're gonna get started on Premiere. So I've been exploring Adobe Firefly's ability to work with my video motion um, files, right? So that's kind of an interesting new space that there's so many different things that you can uh, do and approach uh, with Adobe Firefly's AI and video, right? So I'm in Premiere at the moment. I'm gonna be opening a file. So let's get started. Actually, I'll create a new file here. Hey, Zanel, nice to see you. Hello, Christian is here. Nice to see you all. Let us know where you're watching from, too. Um, I think I've already seen a couple different languages in chat, so let us know where you're watching from. So I'm gonna create a new file. I'm gonna create a new sequence here. I'm just hit create. Let's open this up, make it bigger. All right, so right away, just to set our foundation for success, I'm gonna go into window workspaces and make sure you have vertical selected. This way it's going to display your assets in a vertical format. But first we're gonna have to change our sequences also. So let's create a new sequence here. Go to file new. And we're making sequence. this for social media? We're making this for social media. Cool. So uh, we're focusing in on our potential to uh, repurpose horizontal, horizontal videos into a vertical format and also get a little bit of imagine imagination in there too, right? It's not just about extending it, but also expressing some, some different concepts with AI. So let's see how far we can take that. All right, so I created a new sequence, so blank so far. We can see my sequence here. And I'm going to import one of my videos. Let's go into this one. I have everything organized, something I've learned that is really, really vital to video editing. I'm still learning. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I are tried you going to be sound the during these? Yeah, for okay, some of cool. them. I'm excited. Not, not all of them, but let's get started with this one here. So I have my video clip here. I can import it directly, which will import the video and the audio. You can see it there. It's asking me if I want to keep the existing settings. I do because that, those are the ones I selected prior. Okay. So you can see that the top and bottom are not visible in this scene. And up here in the metadata, I have some information about my file. I can read that I had my settings at one, uh, 120 file, uh, frames per second, which means I can slow it down. I'm grateful for that. That means I can have a longer file a lot of fun okay but it also it's also recorded at um a horizontal 10 1920 by 1080 or vice versa i can't ever get that right right so let's see it here let's go to shift five i love using shortcuts to find my panels so now i'm in the effects panel right here so if i reduce this you can see that it's a fully horizontal scene and that's not going to work out for our vertical viewers on their phones and so I could choose not to use this video at all and have it collecting digital dust, or I can use um, 
the help of Adobe Firefly's AI to expand this image. So at the moment, it's not native in Premiere, but we, we have our workarounds for our workflows here. So we're going to find a way to do that. So first, I'm going to make the scale just exactly where I want it. I think I want it between these two palm trees. So I'm framing the uh, fellows that are passing by. I love collecting these moments where somebody's just like, just existing in, in life, right? So we have some people uh, in a bike, some people running, and I love this like hill view, super cool. Yes, I love sitting on park benches and like making up stories for those people. You do? You like have their whole life planned out and you're like, that might not be anything, but in my brain, that's what they are. It's like, oh, they're going home, they have two dogs and like they have something in the crock pot for later. <laughs> Oh my gosh. So honestly, that is a good exercise for you to like develop like storytelling. Yes, yes. Because we really don't know what's happening, but hey, potentially that could be a, a script. Yes. We have Ooh, to, that's true. They turn have into to add some conflict in there yes. and some resolution and you're good. So I'm going to hit the letter O to set an out point and then I at the beginning. So that's the length of time of my uh, video at the moment, right? So you can see the fellows coming in from almost like from the palm tree, which I thought that would be kind of cool. And around here, I do a little shake, which I do not want included in this video. And that's going to be an important point because I need my video to be as static as possible for this effect. Um, so this is a tripod moment, but yes. I guess I got near it and I bumped it. Um, so if you're going to try this out, attempt to use like um, uh, static uh, shots that you took on a tripod or you placed on something, but they're static. Yeah, you wouldn't be moving. able to do this at all handheld, right? Handheld would be really, really like, uh, I'm. You can make it happen. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it would take a like long time. Generally, fill every frame. Every frame, uh, which yes. sounds crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but hopefully, um, you have a few assets there that you can work. Yes, this and out with. as we work on this, if you missed it yesterday, do we have camera two on? By the way, oh, it's it's on it's on sin. I think. Okay, so if uh, you are joining us and didn't join us yesterday. Guess what? Adobe Firefly is out of beta. It is available for commercial use. It is available to all of you. If you have a Creative Cloud uh, membership, it is open and available to you um, until November 1st. So November 1st, we have some uh, generative credit system coming in. Um, there are a bunch of numbers. There's a bunch of FAQs that can happen over in chat. Uh, but until then, you can generate uh, to your heart's delight commercial use is available now, which is really cool. It is all trained on Adobe Stock, so it is safe for commercial use. And the Adobe yeah. Stock contributors have been compensated and will continue to be compensated um, for their contributions to Firefly. So really putting creators I, first, which I is really cool. That. It's really exciting for me personally, because I find that everything here is super fun to experiment with. But there is a point where we cross over to how can we make this uh, be part of the businesses that we're running, uh, whether you're a freelancer, you know, you're solo creator, you're trying to develop a new business, being able to use this as commercial use just changes the game completely, right? Yes. So for me, something like this can then be repurposed or uh, it can be a collaboration between me and a client for a location or we want to create an essence. And I can now begin to pitch uh, elements like this for social media marketing, right? Yep. Um, and again, I'm repurposing a, a vertical video, I mean, a horizontal video that I potentially would have had no use for it. No, and even less so a um, monetizable use for it if um, Adobe Firefly wasn't ready for commercial use. True. Okay, so I'm gonna reduce this speed. I'm gonna hit Command R to change the speed or you can right click and find that clip speed duration and do a 25% because we have all these frames that we can utilize and that's what frames per second gives you the power to do, right? So we can see these folks kind of running by, but like it's a little bit slow-mo and cinematic and kind of cool to see people like doing this otherwise fast motion, but it's like, we just enter slow. It is, it is. <laughs> yeah, you and know? it's only my workflows are also gonna be with runners, so today is a fitness day here it's on Adobe Live, day. yes. Yeah, at least theoretically, even if I didn't work out this morning. Yes, and someone's asking, sorry, uh, clarification on that, so will we charge extra for Adobe Firefly in November? No, if you're a Creative Cloud member, uh, there are a certain amount of credits that are included in your plan. Uh, we do have information, firefly.adobe.com, I believe, has some information, there is an FAQ there, oh, so yeah. it's included in your plan, and even once you run out of generative credits, you'll still be able to generate, um, I think that this speeds will just change of those renders. So uh, sorry for the clarification on that. Yes, you will have a certain amount that are assigned to whatever 
whatever plan you have, whether it's Photoshop only, uh, Creative Cloud, you will have credits. And once those credits run out, you can still generate. You just need to uh, maybe wait a little bit longer for those generations as they go. Yeah, so it's more about like buying that's that optimized speed yes. for your your projects. And we all know speed, I mean, speed is really important for me for how, how quickly I can create my projects. Okay, so one thing I wanted to note that is really important, we're gonna be creating, a, we're gonna be uh, getting a screenshot from our video to get this working. So in order to find that, we have to go into these added uh, tools. And in there, you're gonna find this little icon that looks like a little camera. So you want to add that in there if you don't already have it um, available. And once you've done that, we can hit okay, and we'll create a screenshot of a moment in here, right? So let me. Uh, also, a question while you do that, a question from chat. Um, somebody had asked, where does the name Firefly come from? Chat. I have asked in every single question. Firefly meeting that I've been in, and no one knows. Like, I have not been able to get an answer on why the name is Firefly, and we should have asked Alexandru yesterday. Um, we totally should have asked him yesterday. Actually, okay, during the stream, I'm going to slack him, and I'll see if I can get the answer from the guy who is in charge of Firefly. If you missed it yesterday, there was a really great uh, interview with Alexandru that answers a lot of these questions that are coming up. So you can check that out over on the Adobe Live YouTube channel, which you can subscribe to. Um, I thought we had a graphic. I threw the graphic. Oh. And Studio Manager, we have a graphic somewhere. There we go. There, there it is. is. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. You can check it out over there. There's a great interview with all the answers that you need. Awesome. So, okay. So when you step into firefly.adobe.com, we're going to be using cross platforms here to create this workflow. You can step into natively. Photoshop has a lot of these features as well. So if you're wondering how did Photoshop just get this really cool upgrade, we've always had this really cool playground of exploration in firefly.adobe.com where you can see all the latest uh, AI effects that Adobe is rolling out and even have a bit of a sneak peek on the ones that are ho hopefully in the works and coming soon. So you can see here it says in exploration. So if you're intrigued to uh, be part of the process, you can always provide feedback, experiment yourself, and see how it works for your workflow. Uh, we all we, we listen here, right? I think there's an entire collaboration development that uh, takes part in creating these uh, really cool AI effects. So. Here, I'm gonna find one of the effects that I'm really acquainted with through Photoshop, which is called Generative Fill. So I'm gonna enter here into Generate Fill. And already I get this like level, this beautiful gallery of inspiration. So if I'm a, a bit lost and how can I use this? How can I repurpose these effects? for my particular uh, medium, whether you're an illustrator, you're a photographer, filmmaker, graphic designer, hopefully these spaces can give you a, uh, some inspiration and start to get a sense of how this, this workflow can work for you. So you can step in here and start to see how it works out and how they use generative fill in order to develop this, um, this result and so many more cool things. I love anything architecture every single time, super, super nice. Okay, so in here, I can upload that screenshot that we just took and saved in our folder, right? And just directly go in here and upload it. I think it's screenshot, cool, there it is. Running, I called it. Okay, so I'm gonna introduce it. And you can see we have that black area at the top and the black area at the bottom. So we have a few tools here that we can work with is going to be a little bit different from Photoshop, whether you're a little bit more acquainted with Photoshop. Uh, but nevertheless, we're going to select an area where we're able to then in, uh, introduce a filling, a substitute filling of pixels, right? So I'm going to select this uh, button here that says insert, which I find that to be kind of interesting. It, it makes more sense. So then I can select this area. You can start to see it's erasing some of the pixels that I have there so that I can get it ready to substitute. And of course I can increase the size of that so I don't have to take so much time. <laughs> I do the same thing. I'm like, oh yeah, we'll work this. And they're like, oh, you can just make it easier. Yeah, um, on my own I take Someone's time. asking, so I'm new to this and haven't heard about Adobe Firefly. What's it commonly used for? So Adobe Firefly is the generative AI model. It is a tool that is incorporated into a lot of Adobe programs now, and it's used for generative stuff. It's used to remove things from your photos. It also is 
is used to recolor. Text um, effects. Text effects. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff uh, that we are going to show you here on this stream as well as the next stream if you stick around. Um, I'll try to do a good overview of everything that's over, uh, that is Firefly. They'll be coming up in about 45 minutes. Um, I'll show you how to do some actions so you can kind of create yeah, quickly I'm excited about with that. Firefly. It's going to be a great time. Uh, and thanks for joining us, Nitro. Uh, thanks for being new. Nice to see you here. Hello, hello, hello. All right, so we're painting in the area. Yeah, we're painting in the area. So we also have a button here that says subtract. So if you want to undo something, I noticed that it's better to toggle between add and subtract. So then I can, you know, go back to that area and decide, okay, maybe I don't want this. I want it to be a little bit more like this. Yep. And so I toggle between those two quite often. And then down here is our familiar prompt. Um, area where we can create some really interesting imaginative uh, request for AI. Uh, in at the moment, we're going to start we're going to start simple, we're going to just hit generate and AI is going to have a degree of understanding that there's a con there's context to this image that we want to fill. So let's hit generate here. Yes, and if you don't put anything in the generate box, it is just going to take the context and generate what it thinks you want, um, yeah. which is really cool. And so you can put like castles and whatever in there, but it will generate some options. It'll generate three options uh, for us to work with. And we can always hit more and it will continue to generate more options. I love that already at the very start, we're getting three options. So I'm not working with one at a time. And to me, that's important because it just optimizes my workflow and I don't feel like, oh my God, so per prompt, I have to get one single result. It's gonna work really well for um, any credits and things of that yep. nature. And I love the, um that some of them are just getting the stocks and some are getting the top of the palm trees. And yeah. I like that you have kind of options for what you want your framing and your composition to be. For this effect, I'm gonna be very playful. So I'm actually going to attempt to download a good number of these to just allow the viewer to experience the fact we're not gonna hide to the viewer that we're creating this with AI. So I actually want to toggle in the same effect. So I'm going to be downloading some of these um, here. And you'll notice that as soon as I hit download, it tells me that I have content credentials included there. And I just want to like dispel a few uh, notions that people don't understand about content credentials. It doesn't mean that it's going to download with a watermark. That's no longer, that's a thing of the past. That is so 20 like. Yeah, 15. so 2023, 20, two yeah. days ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know, like a few hours ago. But yeah, so it's not going to be that. So you don't have to concern yourself with um, your image not being usable because it has that uh, n that gnarly wa watermark. Instead, it means that it Im includes a level of transparency that this was created with AI, but in the metadata. So it's just baked in, imagine it in that yep. way. And if we want to flip over to my screen real quick, I want to talk yeah. about content credentials, right? Because we talk a lot about like, there are automatically assigned to your files, but then it's like, why? What do you do? So you can actually go to verify.contentauthenticity.org. And from here, if you have a file, you can click on inspect image. And this is where you get the uh, kind of information that you need. You can upload an image. It will give you different matches that may be matching from Adobe Stock, from other places. It also will tell you the programs that are used, all of uh, the Firefly, if Firefly is used, how it's been used, any imported assets on that. It'll give you all of the metadata and information of that file. Um, and all that is is verify.contentauthenticity.org. Uh, that's going to be a really great place that as you start seeing images, if it's something that doesn't feel believable, you're not sure, you can go here, verify verify and see what has been used and see if the magic of Firefly has been used on that image or that video. Um, yeah. So let's hop back to your videos uh, and kind of see what we're going to do with that generation. Yeah, sure. So that kind of, that makes complete sense too. It's not even like, okay, to just find out if it's, um, if it's been created through AI. It's also to attribute some level of credit to those folks who help train the AI th through their images. Yeah, and really cool. That makes me feel more comfortable as a photographer myself. Um, so hopefully that continues to be like something everybody uh, gets gets acquainted with. I think it's these. I'm not sure if I downloaded them. Cool. And we've got a couple options here. Are we going to do the video where oh, we like cycle through backgrounds to kind of show that we're generating yes, the tops? Yes, that's cool. exactly what I'm doing. Yeah, you're catching on. Ooh, that's going to be very trippy. 
There they are. Okay, cool. And someone's saying, is the Verify website affiliated with Adobe? Yes, Adobe started the Content Authenticity Initiative. Um, and it is an organization that partners with a lot of big businesses to help make sure that as AI is rolling out, uh, everything is staying authentic. So I believe that there are a bunch of different businesses and companies that we're working with to make sure that the content authenticity and content credentials get implied as well. Yeah, and I think that's going to be really helpful for me. Just that's been such a big question of, okay, but how can can we discern whether an image is original and when an image is not? Uh, it has been edited and and played with, and I think that's like that just kind of creates these like very fair categories that we can start to decide. I want to be part of this one yep. or this one. Um, okay, so I am trying to here you go. AI stills. All right, organizing is helpful. Okay, so I'm gonna import those images. So we had them in a folder here under video. It's called uh, AI separated BG files. And one cool thing about Premiere is I can import the entire folder and it's gonna keep my organization level, right? So it still has the naming uh, that I created there. And I have all those files here available for me. Now, when I import these images, I can import them all at once. And you'll notice that when I do that, they're all this kind of long length. Ooh, how do you fix this? Yeah. I've, I've run into this problem so many times. Please teach me. <laughs> so there's there's a couple ways of doing that. We can begin by uh, right-clicking directly in our library and uh, stepping into speed and duration. And here we can change the timing to oh. 15 seconds, 20 seconds. It, you, you start to gauge what, how much time is perfect for you and hit OK. So nothing seems to have happened, but now once we drag oh. in, it's going to have that timing. That's so uh, helpful for um, time lapses or if you're doing stop motion kind of stuff. Yeah, exactly. So helpful. You want that order, that organization. So you might have noticed that we still have those edges there visible. So we're going to correct that by selecting our video, which is going to be at the top. And you can differ, uh, change this. At the moment, I'm using the generated AI files as background images. And so my video is at the top, and I'm going to hit Shift F5, Shift 5 to go to my effects and in here, I'm gonna go into opacity and I'm gonna grab this uh, square and it's gonna create a mask right here, right? So right now our video is working, is happening within that mask, okay? So we want to expand that mask. It's a little bit too small. So you can grab those anchor points and expand it a little bit um, just to give it a more room and I can do it from here. Or I can choose to expand it directly from our our menu here in mask expansion, right? So we're doing that. And just to give you some more visibility of that, I'm gonna uh, turn that off and we can see the expansion happening. Oh, now this, cool. this is gonna be important because we want those edges to be feathered so that it blends together with our background image. So I'm going to go into mask feathering it defaults to 10. We're going to increase that to a little bit more there. You can have some visibility of how that's working. Reduce that expansion and then turn that light, that eye back on. And you can see that that is that line is no longer as visible, right? So we can work out the bottom one here too. I noticed I expanded that too far, right? So you can start to uh, get a better understanding of like how the masking works in order to help you blend those two images, the AI generated background and your video resting on the top, right? So we'll move this around a little bit just to get it right. That's really cool the way that the the feather really helps to blend it together. Yeah, it's it starts to feel a little bit like the workflow I'm accustomed to in Photoshop. There's something really natural about playing with uh, files and compositing layers that you don't often approach video with that with that mindset, but you can. Um, there's still different ways to composite a video with a still, especially a generated um, AI still. So I might want to then duplicate this uh, and just uh, holding Alt and duplicate it here so I can continue to uh, play it throughout the entirety of my video. And it, so it's gonna just play and it's gonna be really cool for somebody to just 
get a get a sense of like, wait, hold on, how's that working out? Now, I would recommend creating as many as possible so that the variation is there um, for the sake of this. I'm just keeping it to four, I think I did. Uh, but yeah, you, you're welcome to experiment and just play around with those external areas and just looks so, so cool to see that uh, blending together. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, so at this point I will export and uh, I'm going to bring this over. This video is going to become now another video that I can use for social media and have it ready for, I put here, ready for Express. So let's see, training, I'll call it training at the park. And we'll just export this. So make sure your in and out points are ready. Um, sometimes it selects it. It says uh, to trim area, to work area, just source in and out. That's why we selected that early on. So hit export, and we're going to cross over to yet another program. Yes, multi-app, multi-app. Yeah. So we're going over into Adobe Express, I believe, right? Express at Adobe.com, and I like this, this particular page because it lets me know that I can get Adobe Express for free. For free? It's so cool. I think there's something there about um, just being able to democratize our uh, design potential to everybody and I've learned so much here I, I wish this was available when I first started because the workflow here is very very close to what I already had established before Express ever existed the the understanding that there's elements that I introduce text that I introduce just like fishing for these elements in order to create a final design but even if I didn't want to start from scratch, I have all these wonderful templates that will give me an insight on how I can develop my own layout design, which I think layout design is on an ongoing training that we're often discerning with our eye. So it's really cool to have all of these different uh, already established templates that I can play around with that will give me a hint on how to work that out. Yes. So in here, we also have some Adobe Firefly power. We have text to image and we have text effects. And so we're going to be playing around with some of these. But one of my favorite new additions is being able to upload my own content. So I'm going to go into this button right here and it says I can upload files as well as a um, video format, video MP4 formats. So let's oh. go into this. So if you're looking, uh, if you're not a video person, you can actually upload AI, PSD, MP4, PNG, any of those. And if you upload a PSD or an AI file, it will convert it from your layers into a new document, which is really yeah. cool. I don't even know you could do video here, but it totally makes sense. Yeah, it totally makes sense. And it already has some, uh, you, you remember at the beginning of Premiere, we had to address our settings. It already has some pre-made settings, so we don't have to be doing the math. You know, we, we're visual creators. So we're going to go to Instagram Reel, and the Instagram Reel um, is already up to date to 1080 by 1920. So it's always kind of keeping this source of libraries, of resources, down to the settings of the platforms that you're trying to export out into. So that's really helpful. So like if Instagram changes that tomorrow, we'll see it. Um, refreshed here and we don't have to worry about it. So now I have a 1080 by 1920 and I have my video that I can play within Adobe Express, which is amazing. I've That's been cool. using it a lot for graphic design. The fact that I can now use video is just kind of blending all my personalities together and it makes complete sense. So what's cool, and this may throw off your workflow, but <laughs> what's really cool here is like, I'm looking at this and I'm like, mm, it feels like it might be a little bit dark, right? Oh, we don't yeah. have to go back into Premiere Pro. We don't have to go back anywhere else. We can change some of those things right here um, to kind of help us level up and kind of balance out uh, where we want to be. So if you just select the video uh, on the artboard, then it pulls right, up over here. Yet yeah, we've got effects, adjustments, animation. We can do all kinds of things to help kind of like pull this into a little bit different style. Um, and again, if you have a personal brand, you can assign your colors. We can increase contrast with the adjustments. We can do highlights, low light. Like there is so oh, much that you can do here. There's so much, so much power to just being able to do this on the go as well, I think. Yes. Um, so for example, in the effects, I have none grayscale darken i have all of these really cool duotone colors that i can still customize with my brand color palette so my brand colors are 
orange and royal blue and maybe that works out maybe it doesn't it already has a memory of my hex number because i use it so often and i have it established within my brand assets so that's really cool i might use white or black to give it a different hint and this might work out better for something with uh, a lot more contrast when you're working with duotones yep and but if you're putting text on top of it and you have a cool video put some duotone drop some white text yeah. helps you with that contrast it's really really Super interesting nice. to kind of play around with these especially with video uh, without having to do any complex uh, kind of augmentations in Premiere Pro. And if you want to just do regular adjustments, you can also do that. So for example, you were mentioning it's a little bit darker. So let's step it in here and brighten it up a little bit. Maybe we can do less of a global edit and just focus in on the highlights and maybe the shadows to create a bit more contrast. It sort of depends on your style, right? We can create a little bit more saturation there, more warmth. Warm up the day. It's a sunny day. Yes. Um, yeah, so this, this has a flat, you know, oftentimes I edit it on Premiere, but it's really cool that I forgot that step and I still have an opportunity to do it here in this area too. And you could even blur it because if we want to add text and this is just exclusively a background uh, video, we can have a blurred background that still has motion in it and have our text visible. Yep, and I love with the blur that we are really taking the next evolution of the trend of like the horizontal video with then that duplicated scaled up and blurred in the background. Oh yeah. You know, yeah. you see all the time that's like, here's the video and then it's blurred in the background so that it like feels the same. We can just use generative fill here uh, to fill in that extra space so we don't have to deal with uh, a different background. Shiny, it already Ooh, selected shiny. my word. So what's really cool about um, the different potentials of AI within Adobe Express is that we have these options for headlines. Headlines are going to help our uh, social media engagement just to increase that like, wait, hold on, I'm like scrolling through and then there's a shock factor, right? So we want to uh, basically equip ourselves with as much strategy as possible when we're trying to market our, our, our work. Uh, whether this is your final work or this is uh, something you're trying to do to express a brand or trying to get your brand across different platforms. So I'm going to select one of these already pre-made, uh, really cool, uh, bubbly 3D style uh, text. All of these have a prompt that gen that help generate them. So we have an insider also on the prompt as soon as we click it. So when we click this one, for example, it says floral hand embroidery pattern. And that is what helped generate this particular text. And that's gonna be really helpful for you to get acquainted with what produces um, what in different scenarios and hopefully develop your own tailored uh, prompts. So I have Sunny here and maybe I want to switch this over to something more like yellow as opposed to floral hand embroidery pattern, let's hit generate. We can still customize those uh, those prompts to make them closer to what we are trying to achieve. So this is a little bit lighter. And what's really cool is um, just behind the scenes, you talked about this on the stream yesterday with Alexandru, who's the head of Firefly. Um, what it's doing is it's rendering each of these letters. And so as you type, so if you had another N or another Y or another U, it doesn't need to re-render that. It's caching it, and so if you have a word, right, so if we type U there, um, it is going to Sunny. do it live. Yeah, so it's really interesting that you can do that live, and as you're making typos or fixing things, uh, it will render those uh, as you go, but then once they are rendered, they will be cached so you can keep using them in that design. Yeah, it's always great to have a <coughs> workflow that is not going to be destructive to you know my my mindset and the way that I want to change my mind about something or I want to make edits because I'm working with clients. That's always so vital in any process that it's not just completely baked in, and there's no going back. You know, there's still pr uh, room for editing. So I have I think Sunny I liked better because you look. Yeah. There you go. Sorry. I just corrected it. So you'll notice that while I play this, we have a static sunny on the on our um, cover. I like to think of it as a cover, like a nice cover introduction. So I want to kind of reduce that over to just the very few seconds at the very start. And that still looks cool, but I think it requires a little bit more motion since we are working with motion at the moment. So let's go into our text here, select it, and let's close this up. And once we close it, we're going to find some cool options down here 
we have animation. And so under animation, you have the opportunity to do an in animation, a looping animation, an out animation. You can choose one or all three. I love using the potential of like in the, the attention grabbing of the in, in animation. There's so many really cool ones here. One of like my favorite ones has to be, what is it right here? Tumble. Tumble. It's Tumble. Tumble. It's, Tumble's it's the best one <laughs> of all of them. Okay, so Tumble seems to be everyone's favorite. Yeah. So I love introducing that, but then I still have more opportunity to change it up and make it uh, more of what I want, right? So having those like detailed decisions is really helpful for me. So I have duration. How long is it going to take to arrive, right? So since we had a cinematic slow-mo video, it kind of makes sense that I'm going to equip it with uh, a text that it's a little bit slower and kind of cool. Okay, so then I have that in there. And then if I go, oh, let's go back to animation. Let's figure out a looping moving over my playhead so I have some visibility of my artwork. And um, let's see. There you go. Select your subject. Okay. Those are the best moments when you click someone and you're like, oh no, what's happening? I've clicked the wrong place. Where'd it go? <laughs> We're back. We're back together. Yeah. So I have this wiggle. I have blinking. We can have jitter. So remember that particular animation is going to be happening throughout your video, throughout the duration of that layer, right? Which at the moment is a pretty short uh, duration, but nevertheless, it's looping, right? So we have a flicker. I think yo-yo is my next favorite when it comes to looping, right? There's something really funny and and um, just playful about it, which I, I really like. Yes. I'm going to go into uh, the out uh, option. And so when I'm going out of the scene where this text is leaving. this These are all uh, effects that I would have to keyframe within Premiere, which I enjoy that process. It's really great. It gives me a lot of power. But the fact that it's possible here and potentially it's going to be something I can use on my iPad, on the go, while I'm traveling, on, you know, on my phone, or just like jumping on the browser and not having to run my computer with anything else. I don't know, it just gives me a lot of different uh, workflow powers outside of my office. Yep. And if you don't know how to pr use Premiere Pro, if you don't know how to use After Effects, you can do it right here. Um, and Absolutely. most of these are things that you would be doing uh, for transitions. A lot of those transitions that you would be trying to do keyframes and easy ease and all that stuff, you don't have to do that here. Um, you can just in uh, Adobe Express, it's right there. Uh, and someone's yeah. asking, what are we using? Using the tumble, it is Adobe Express, so new.express.adobe.com. Um, you can go there and just click on an object and click on animate, and you can use the tumble effect. I love that there's also these pre made text uh, uh, hier hierarchical uh, titles, right? So I'm able to play with different. Uh, maybe anecdotes or quotes that I want to introduce into my reel. So it gives it a little bit more of a, let's change this color, it's not that visible. It gives it a little bit more of, of an interaction, right? We all often love seeing people express themselves in different statements. So I might want to say, looking at the bright side. Oh. Looking at the bright side. But then that font is a little bit, um, it's not working for this, so maybe we can use some of the recommended fonts. And I think, I mean, there's so much, you notice that throughout this entire process, I have an assistant beside me giving me options for the next step that I might want to consider. Do you want a different font? Do you want to do an animation? Do you want to create a very cool headline with um, with prompts. There's just so many Ooh. things that I can think about. Oh, we're that, that one wasn't right for this, but I, <laughs> I really like that font. What font is that? So I'm going to use it in mine. It's for Halloween. Um, yes. What is it? I don't know. How Does can I the, see the font? Um, click out. Uh, back. Oh, yeah. Yes. It should be able and to then it should show you when you select the, the text. Yeah. That's a good point right here. Yes. Montserrat. Montserrat? Monster Mash. Warn. <laughs> Monster Mash. All right, chat. With that stick around. That's, it's gonna make a comeback. I love that. <laughs> okay, sorry. Keep going. I love how you're always hunting for a font. I am. We're gonna do Halloween stuff. I think. Looking at the bright side. Yeah, I think. I think part of the reason why it's recommending that it's because it's seasonal. So there's yep. there's a lot of time that I'm saving just in not having to source these things outside of the app that I'm working in, which is really helpful. 
Okay, looking at the bright side, and I think I'm going to animate that too, but you, you notice that I have it um, throughout the entirety of the video, so it's obstructing my, my first title, which was my cover. So I'm going to change that so that it moves over once Sunny goes away and then int introduces this next anecdote. And the same in the same fashion that we did the previous one, we should be able to then go back here and go into animation. Animation is one of my favorite things because you can create anything and just make it into a relevant video format that we currently have today in social media. So it's really yep. important to kind of stay in, in the loop of that and having those options is, is going to be great. So I can introduce this, that spin doesn't work out. I think it doesn't fit what we're doing. Looking at the bright side with a little fade in, almost having some of the restraint is helpful as much as I want to do that bungee. But we have this fade and the looping. Maybe we have something like... Mm, the yo-yo is kind of cool, but we're going to reduce that speed. Yeah. So it's a little bit more subtle. And we're gonna do something like that. We can also change the direction if we wanted to, right? Something like this, but I think the downward look great. And we might do something like shrinking for the exit. And I have some options here, it says personality. Do I want it to be energetic, soft, smooth? And all of these things are, are pretty peculiar because you're choosing them based on your conceptual thinking, right? Rather than being like, okay, let me slow down these num these numbers are going to equal slowing down. It's already creating these potential uh, personality types yep. that you can pick from. This is so much better than being like, oh, we need a hyperbolic curve on our easy ease <laughs> that it's like, I yes. want it to be <laughs> exactly. soft. <laughs> That's exactly right. So it's just helping and just creating your conceptual uh, ideas and bring them together. So I have this, let's play it along. We have Sunny and we have our toggle of all the different backgrounds and we oh. have looking at the bright side. What did you, can you do one more time? The oh, effect on Sunny was really interesting and I think it was a combo of the yo-yo and the grow. It did like a jump toward the screen. I hadn't seen that effect before. Yeah, so the exit is zooming out and oh, it's, and it's still yo-yoing, and so it does this kind of like, ooh, ooh I love that. Out. Yeah, so it's really helpful to transition to another scene whenever you are creating things are completely zooming out. Yes. Um, so that's why I like to use it here. Yeah, and um, someone's asking, uh, Andrew's asking, how did you get the window assistant on Express? Um, it is contextual. So we were working with type, and when you have type selected, it will suggest fonts for you. Um, it will also suggest colors. It will. There's a lot of suggestions happening over on the left, but it is contextual. So it depends on what you have selected. Um, once you select something, it will come up with those options for you. The same thing in Photoshop and Illustrator, which I'll be showing you in a little while. We have a contextual toolbar, which will help you with everything that you need as well. Yeah, I think that the contextual bar is really, really cool. I definitely find it really interesting whenever it changes per the tool that I'm using. Um, I didn't notice that for a while there. I thought it was just for generative fill. It was just for us to put in a prompt. Oh, it's all there. Okay, so I have also the ability to add some audio in here. So I think I'm going to oh, look yeah. for some cool audio. One of my favorites that is not um, visible right away, uh, which is so interesting that there's an entire stock available here, is um, using lo-fi music. So if you don't oh, yeah. see it available here, you can still search for different music. So let's see what we have playing here. Can you hear that? I can't hear it. Chat, can you hear it? Oh, I got it. I got it now. There it is. We're entering that mode. <laughs> I love that. So let's use that. That feels happy and sunny. Yeah. To it. Yeah, it's a it's a kind message, right, for the day. And sometimes that's all we need to do to connect with uh, our virtual friends, yep. right? I also think that we hit the BPMs on the scene transitions. We hit them like so it, good. it's pretty I know, good. I wanted to say the same. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I planned that, of course. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you do have to think in uh, a, a four steps, so it'll hit that mark. I love 
times. Wow, coincidence! Look at that. Yeah, and one of one of my favorite things, which is like a, a nerdy attribute, is when I download, I have the option to download at really great resolutions at 1080 at 4K. I mean, that's that's um, an amazing powerhouse when it comes to editing video on the go. I mean, that's incredible. So now from here, I can also choose to like also. Sorry, I forgot to say this. I can also choose to uh, add a voiceover. Yeah. Right? So I love being able to do a little snippet. So right here we have record voiceover. Let's see, allow, right? Start recording. Looking at the bright side. And finish recording. All right. So then right where my my timeline was that that snip is going to be introduced and of course i can always lower the volume of my soundtrack to be able to balance between my voiceover and that gives it a, a narrative at the bright side right cool. yeah gives it a nice a narrative for us to connect and also have just different ways to express ourselves i think that's always so helpful um to to like find a point of connection. Yep, and what's really cool is if you have different scenes you wanna to transition to, you can click on that add scene and just add more videos in. So if you're doing like a day in the life, you can just keep adding your videos and then go back and do a voiceover, right? Toss in the lo-fi and then yeah. like, hey guys, get ready for me. Today we're gonna to be doing something Looking totally insane. Let's go ahead and take a look. And you can narrate through the whole thing with through one Through the voiceover. entire video, yep. yeah, I've done that before. It's a really cool, and. It, just a really cool effect to get somebody to know that you're you're taking them on on a, on a journey of sorts, right? Ooh, yes. So of course now I can download it, but um, at 4K or 1080, but I can also share it, right? So we have these really cool options here to share it directly to Instagram, to Facebook, uh, Pinterest, Twitter, LinkedIn. So we can also schedule our posts. Oh, scheduling. K okay, chat. We don't talk about this enough. Um, you can schedule. You can schedule posts. Yeah. You can schedule. You can schedule stuff to post to your social media, so you don't have to think about it. And you can create like ninety days of content, and then not look at your phone for ninety days. It's great. Yeah, it's awesome because honestly, I think being able to plan your work ahead of time, at least a week ahead, is really helpful to be able to have like the that cadence um, for your workflow. Somebody said, you know, when Andrew grabs his headphones, we're in for a laugh. It's true. I. Second that. It's true. <laughs> I second uh, that. Yeah, anytime we can do voiceovers, it gets unhinged. I mean, it's pretty amazing that I can actually, <clears throat> excuse me, I can actually upload videos now before I was doing a lot of uh, carousels through the scheduler, but now I can upload even video reels. That's pretty amazing, right? So I can select um, our, my Instagram page here. Of course, there's a process for you to connect. You have your captions and you even have some strategy behind it. So you can create your first comment because your first comment is going to help uh, you know, your audience connect with you better. So these are little details that uh, the, you know, the team is just considering as we're moving things forward and considering your workflow and your strategies and your goals along the way and implementing them in the program completely you know, right here in the UI. So we have, um, I can say, I'm not gonna go through this too much, but giving you positive uh, affirmation. And what's cool is we have a couple boxes here. So you can add your caption, but you also can add your first comment. So if you want to add some hashtags and stuff, you can do both of those, which is really cool. And you can see a preview of what it's going to look like and then X and have it saved in your scheduler. Um, so I, I love being able to do that. You can also decide to publish it immediately. Um, I do this quite often. It's one of my favorite things to do because I don't always want to be uh, wide awake at like 6 a.m. in the morning or like late at night when I'm strategizing for my audience in the UK, for my audience in the West Coast in LA or here in San Francisco, you know, being in a central time zone. I think about those folks who I'm connecting with and whether they're asleep or awake. Do I have to be up that early? No, I can just schedule it along the way. So I'm just going to close this for now so we can do another video so we still and have time, right? Yes, real quick. Sorry, can we go back to the scheduler? Yeah. So if you have scheduled something and you need to move it, you can actually go to the scheduler. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and Here. then you'll be able to see everything that you have scheduled to post on this calendar. Yeah. And you can click and drag. It's by channel. By everything weeks. is here. Um, by weeks, yeah. So it's super helpful if you schedule a bunch of stuff. Uh, you also, I believe, can drag and drop into those spaces or, again, make new posts like that. Yeah, so if you want So use to. the scheduler. It's super helpful. Yes, if you want to drag and drop uh, files or different um, assets here, like, for example, I have my image references from yesterday. Yep. I can just import them. And you can see directly from the scheduler. I yeah, and someone's saying, file. can you schedule any type of file? Um, I believe that it's like PNG, JPEG, video. Like, it's the standard files that you could post on social media. So no PSDs, no AIs. But you can upload them, convert them, and then schedule and them And upload easily. them as a carousel as well. So yes. you can reorganize them and find um, the, the different cadence that you want. So all right, we're going to do another one. Hopefully yes. we have some We have time. like seven minutes. OK, sweet. We got it. Um, okay, so shortcuts are going to be really important. <laughs> yes, yeah, so there may be some hotkeys that are happening here. We'll try to call them out as we go. Yeah. Um, but so. if you don't have it, you can get like hotkey overlays for your keyboard, and it helps you learn the programs really, really well. Um, it helps you work a lot faster. Oh, yeah. I think that is a game changer for me. It's something that I don't think it's spoken up of enough. And I love being able to like have a good uh, vault of hotkeys for every program. And the cool thing is that within the Adobe ecosystem, a lot of them are kind of the same. Oh, I imported the wrong one. And someone's saying if you create templates, it gets even faster. Yes. So doing Adobe Express, setting up some templates is so helpful to be able to just update, especially if you're using linked objects. If you have a brand set up, everything is there that's so much easier and quicker for you. So I have this really cool fellow dancing, which I love. Right, and I just thought maybe he deserved a more colorful environment, Ooh. right? Because you can tell his mind is in a wonderful disco vibe. Oh, he's vibing. He's vibing. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do a screenshot here real quick and save it to our screenshot folder. Perfect. So I'll put dancer so we remember. And then go into our Adobe Firefly, go back to our home page and hit generate for that generative fill so we can upload our asset image reference here video okay so our screenshot should be in here and now in this one i'm not going to be expanding i'm going to be adding elements cool so i want to be able to think of different areas that I can create. Oftentimes, I think of the corners as a way of framing these spaces. So again, it looks like I'm removing pixels, but that's because we're going to substitute them with a prompt. Um, so we're going to do this little area here, and potentially we can uh, maybe add some blurred plants to give him a little bit of color, right, and hit generate. And remember, this scene is going to be in motion at the lower third. So unlike the previous one where we had a square centered in the bottom, this one is something that is taking up the entire vertical space, but we're adding elements to give it a little bit more of, um, I don't know, more playful uh, energy. Yep. And maybe vines might work better here um, to see, because right now it looks like it's generating like a leaf. Uh, a single leaf. Yeah, yeah, but I think we're good. I think that like we can work with that and kind of show if we want yeah, to try different so I'll things. Yeah, so download download these two. And, and someone's saying, "Are you doing this all with a trackpad?" You betcha. I have a mouse. Oh my god! Thanks for saying. That. Yes, I have a mouse for the next stream. But yes, trackpad. Um, in the studio, we very rarely have mouse mice mice. We mm. usually just use our trackpads, <laughs> which when we're doing stuff like this, gets so stressful for us. So yes, thank you, thank you for seeing us. I feel <laughs> I feel like seen in this moment. But yes. yeah. Okay, so um, I'm going to do the same thing, but this time I'm, I'm going to select that upper area and do colorful roof, colorful ceiling. Colorful ceiling. We have about three minutes left, too. We're on, we're on the clock now, chat. Chat, you need to watch faster. That's what needs to happen. <laughs> Speed up those <laughs> eyes. <Generate> <laughs> yeah, so ultimately what I'm hoping to do always, that one's cool. Ooh, that's really cool. What I'm hoping to do always is kind of bring in an element of imagination. It isn't always about striving for correcting an image to make it pass for real, for a real image. Sometimes it could be about uh, adding a level of just imagination and creativity just to have fun with it. Um, I think 
in my head space, it was about bringing some color for this fella. So let's try to do that here. I'm going to download. I'm going to go into my downloads. Yeah, here to go and get that image. List. Magic. Date added. We got it. We got it, chat. That was me. That was you. <laughs> I posted. <laughs> That's funny. And if you want to you stick go. around for the next stream, we'll be starting in about five minutes. Um, and I will be showing you how to do actions in Photoshop, a little bit of Illustrator. We will be making some uh, spooky Halloween stuff, have a little monster mash. But we'll also be monster showing you how to speed up your process using generative AI in the power of actions and some batch editing in Photoshop. So it's going to be a little all over the place. It's going to be chaotic. It'll be with us. Uh, so you know it'll be crazy. Uh, and maybe we'll do voiceover. I don't know. If you're good, we'll do some goofy voiceovers, have some fun there. I love um, your voiceovers. It, your voice is so perfect for I've voiceovers. always wanted to do radio. Um, we need to do a <laughs> podcast. Uh, all right. So we've added some elements in here. And you we can see. We made it in time. Yeah. It looks so dope. And someone says, okay, not a chance to go away. It's You have five minutes to go away, and then you have to come back because I know I'm going away for five minutes, and then I will be back. Yeah, we'll be um, back. Yeah, we'll be back. So go make a hot pocket. Um, make and, a hot pocket. Yeah, make, make a hot pocket. Um, okay, let's do awesome. one last render and check out the video before we cut for the break. Yeah, okay. One last one. There we go. Repeating. And okay, let's do that play. Let's see what happens. We had a little gap there, but you can start to see the potential for playing around with Adobe Firefly, yep. some imagination, and allow allowing this to play along. We didn't actually like mask it, but you can see some really cool stuff. We there. got close. So stick around. Five minutes. We're going to be getting super spooky um, and also running fitness, scary fitness. I don't know. <laughs> uh, thanks for joining us in. Stick around, everybody. Uh, in the chat, leave us some ghost emojis, and we'll see you in about four minutes. Bye. Right.